Little, little Warming Mustaf, Stories of Extraordinary Ordinary People, told by Giovannino Guareschi, novelist, and Enzo Giannacci, songwriter. This is a crazy exhibit because uh, 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 everyone told uh, us that uh, there are too many cultural differences uh, between the uh, US and Italy. And, uh, but we are so crazy that we went on and uh, we were able to, 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 to present and distribute uh, also in the uh, US after having presented it uh, in a uh, Rimini meeting and everywhere in Italy. For one reason, that uh, we think that the essence of the human person is the same everywhere. We believe that, we believe that uh, our humanity, our being human, is uh, the key of traversing every stormy sea. Sometimes uh, the ones uh, who show us the beauty of uh, our human nature are the more marginalized, the oddest, the simplest, or the most wounded. These are uh, the kind of people that Giovannino Guareschi and Enzo Giannacci created. As one of the most related Italian writers, Guareschi is father to Don Camillo e Peppone, the two central characters in his writing. Enzo Giannacci, a songwriter, a medical doctor, was one of the major luminaries of the Italian artistic and cultural scene. Before uh, presenting the, the, the exhibit, I take this the opportunity to thank all present, especially the Vice Consul Isabella Periotto. And then I welcome to the stage Consul General of Italy in New York, Natalia Pintavalle. edition of New York Encounters, a weekend dedicated to public discussion, exhibit, uh, live performance on the theme Longing for the Sea and Yet Not Afraid. I would like to thank uh, the president of uh, New York Encounters, uh, Maurizio Maniscalco, for inviting me every year to be part of this important uh, appointment. Uh, and I'm here today with my colleague Isabella Periotto to testify the interest and support of the Italian institutions and the Italian community uh, of New York for this important initiative. Uh, the exhibit, uh, Little World and Minimal Staff, organized within this framework, uh, pays tribute to two distinguished Italian artists, the singer, uh, songwriter and actor Enzo Iannacci, uh, and uh, the Italian novelist and journalist uh, Giovannino Guarischi. Uh, and I really would like to thank Professor uh, Giorgio Vitadini for putting together this crazy uh, exhibit. Uh, professor of Statistics at the University of Bicocca. So, uh, <laughs> he must be crazy. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, he will introduce us in this uh, little world of minimal stuff. Uh, the theme of this year encounters uh, longing for the sea and yet not afraid uh, resembles in a way to the lives of Yannacci and uh, Guarinsky. Yannacci uh, was a surgeon and was not afraid to jump into the world of art, music and performance and Guarinsky uh, uh, had lived uh, throughout the Second World War and uh, uh, beyond uh, as a writer and journalist uh, and was not afraid at all uh, to submit everyone uh, to his harsh comments uh, and critics, uh, including the president. Uh, uh, since uh, Professor Vitalini will be much more efficient than me uh, in describing the story of these two extraordinary, ordinary people, uh, I would like just to tell you uh, what they represent for me as an Italian. 
and uh, as a child, uh, you know, I was not allowed uh, much uh, television by my mother. But uh, she allowed me uh, and my sister to watch the movies of Peppone and Don Camillo, uh, the Guareschi characters. And I learned a lot from uh, uh, those movies. Uh, in particular, a very important lesson that uh, politics and religion can be fun first uh, and also very, very human. Uh, as for Iannacci, uh, I think there is no Italian of my generation, not only from Milan, the city of Iannacci, and whose dialect he often uh, used for his text. Uh, there is no one who does not know the song about the homeless man who lives and eventually dies in the street, but is able to talk about love. Both Guareschi and Iannacci contributed very much uh, in uh, shaping the present Italian culture and society, and uh, in uh, orienting uh, Italian public opinion to uh, be more open-minded and uh, welcoming towards diversity and foreigners. Uh, as Consul General, dealing daily uh, with old and new kinds of immigration and knowing how difficult uh, uh, can be to go beyond the differences and accept and welcome other uh, different people. I really think that uh, we have a lot more to learn from artists like uh, Guareschi and Iannacci. Uh, we must indeed learn how to uh, not to be afraid. Uh, so, thank you very much uh, to all the volunteers and the organizations uh, which made these encounters possible. And a special thanks to Ezio Castelli and AFSI USA for their work and the long standing friendship towards the Consulate of Italy and the Italian institution in New York. And uh, I know that there is another exhibit from AFSI, very beautiful to see. So, thank you very much, and uh, I leave you with uh, Professor Peter. This train that is in, there is something, someone uh, serious, that is uh, uh, Paolo Malesio, Professor Emeritus in Italian Literature at Columbia University, is present. Thank you for coming. What we are about to see may seem at first sight to have very little in common with American realities, persons and situations, but this is not really so. It's true that I, as a native of the Emilia-Romagna region in Italy, can feel a link to Giovannino Guareschi's short stories that others uh, do not have necessarily to feel, but it seems to me that Guareschi's message of reconciliation between opposite ideologies can resound very well in the United States, especially in this uh, electoral season. Uh, besides, Guareschi does this in a, with very gentle humor and with a deep attention to the everyday life of very normal, very common people. And when we go from Guareschi's Emilia, Romagna region, to the Milanese world of the author and singer Enzo Iannacci, the similarity is even more striking. I mean especially the similarity with life in New York, because the hobos, the down-to-earth and sometimes downtrodden characters of Iannacci, uh, certainly resound with persons I and you see every day in the streets of New York. Uh, small World, Mundo Piccolo, is the title of the most successful uh, book of short stories by Guareschi, and it is small in terms of geography, because this is a very specific area within the general region of Emilia-Romagna, and small also in terms of the social status of this card. These are, as I said, very simple people, uh, not sophisticated, and engaged in activities that have mostly to do with rural life. 
But just because of this, because these people and the Nazis people are very close to the ground, so to speak, very close to the human basis of us all, just because of this, uh, the universal appeal of their stories, of their predicaments, of their sorrows and joys, acquire a clearly universal value. Try telling me something, and you'll see. 
But Honor finished the infant Jesus' eyes, which was the hardest part. Then he touched up the pink of the little lips. I want to throw in the towel, but I can't. We're stopping you. No one's stopping me. I could beat off a regiment with a crowbar. Are you scared? I've never been scared in my life. Well, I have been lonely. Sometimes I get scared. The bullet passed four inches from my forehead. If I hadn't moved my head back at exactly the right moment, I'd have been done for. It was a miracle. The bonnet now finished the infant Jesus' face and was refreshing the pink of his body. I'm sorry I missed him. But he was just too far away and the cherry trees were in the way. Three nights ago I was keeping an eye on your house because I was sure that the man who knows you also knows Pizzi, shot Pizzi. Who is he? I don't know. I saw him from a long way off, going towards the window of the chapel. But I couldn't fire until he did something. As soon as he fired, I did too, but I missed. Well, thank the Lord. I know how you shoot. And now I can say there were two miracles. <laughs> the phone sighed and went back to his painting. Something's not right. It feels as if everyone's looking at me differently now. Everyone, even Brusco. It'll be the same for Brusco and for all the others. Everyone's afraid of everyone else. And whenever anyone speaks, it's as if they're having to defend themselves. I feel like I'm in prison. There's a way out of every prison on this earth. Prisons are only for the body, and the body doesn't count for very much. The infant Jesus was now finished, and with his fresh color so pink and bright, he almost shot at the enormous dark hand of the bonnet. The bonnet looked at it and seemed to feel the warmth from that little body on his palm. And he forgot the prison. He put the pink infant Jesus on the table with great care, and Don Camillo put the Madonna near him. My little boy is learning the Christmas poem. Every evening I hear him going through it with his mother at bedtime. It's a phenomenon. Then he put the little figure of the ass next to the Madonna, leaning over the infant Jesus. Here's Pepone's son, here's Pepone's wife, and here's Pepone. Said Don Camilo, touching the ass last of all. And here's Don Camilo. Explained Pepone, taking the figure of the ox and putting it next to the group. Huh. Beasts always understand one another. <laughs> the presbytery, Pepone found himself in the dark night of the Po Valley, but he was completely at ease now because he could still feel the warmth of the pink infant Jesus in his hand. When he recites it to me on Christmas Eve, it will be magnificent. And when the democracy of the proletariat is in charge, we mustn't touch poetry. In fact, we should make it mandatory. The river flowed slowly and placidly just two steps away at the foot of the dike, and that was a poem too, a poem which began when the world began and is still going on. And it took a thousand years to shape and smooth the smallest of the billions of stones in the riverbed. And so only after 20 more generations will the water have smoothed a new pe pebble. And a thousand years from now, people will rush at 3,000 miles an hour in machines with superatomic rockets. To do what? To arrive at the end of the year, open mouthed in the presence of that same plaster infant Jesus, touched up one evening long ago by Comrade Pepone with his paintbrush.
So we need your help here. So repeat after me, please, all of you. A, B, C, B. A, B, C, B. Now with me. A, B, C, B. Maestro. A, B, C, B. 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 A, B, C, B.
and in Guareschi stories along uh, with Don Camillo and Peppone, there is uh, another protagonist, the Christ. This Christ speaks uh, and uh, Guareschi writes, the one who speaks in my stories, not Christ, but my Christ, in other words, the voice of my conscience, personal stuff, my own internal business. What does it mean? That we have a other heart. We can listen to our heart. If we listen to our heart, we go towards truth. We discover a truth react. What is the connection between uh, uh, the conscience and Christ? It's very interesting because of, we usually think that the uh, conscience is uh, something relativist. Instead, the suggestion of Varesky and Yannacci that if we listen to our heart, we discover truth. The actors are Laura Rocca, Jack O'Donoghue, and DJ Ben. That's the way the sheep buzz. This episode was written in 1966. Don Camillo has to face the great changes that Western societies are beginning to experience. Changes that began to undermine the very values considered, until then, the founding values of civilization. And that up to that point was shared among the majority. The value of family, the reference to an organized religion. Flora, the daughter of Don Camilo's sister, goes to visit her uncle. Flora is a shameless, cynical, and sarcastic girl that decides to pay a visit to her uncle to trick him into buying a refrigerator. Meanwhile, she asks for confession, but she doesn't repent everything. And when Don Camillo bursts out, Lord, did you hear this? He is surprised by the Christ in Guareschi's conscience who says, exactly what I hope to hear from her. As the dialogue that follows shows, perhaps God doesn't like many man-made rules. He seems only concerned that the connection with him is not lost. A few moments later, Don Camillo heard her pick up, drive off. So he emerged from the confessional to confer with the Christ over the high altar and disburden himself of the sadness in his soul. Dear Lord, if young people make a joke out of the most serious things in life, what on earth is going to become of your church? Don Camilo, don't let yourself be carried away by what appears on the television and the newspapers. The fact is God does not need men. It is men have need of God. Light exists even in a world of the blind. As someone once said, though they have eyes, they cannot see. The light won't go out just because there's nobody to see it. Lord, what, what is this insanity? Does it perhaps mean that the great circle is about to close and the world is rushing towards self-destruction? Why are you so pessimistic? Because my sacrifice in vain then? Do you mean my mission among mankind has failed because men's malice stronger than the goodness of God? No, sir. All I meant to say was that these days people only believe in what they can see and touch. But there are essentials that cannot be seen or touched. Things which one can, cannot live without. This is the self-destruction I was talking about. It seems to me men are wiping out their entire spiritual heritage. The only true fortune they have accrued thousands of years. One day, not very long from now, men will find themselves back in the brutalism of the caveman. The caves will be skyscrapers, filled with the latest equipment and miraculous machines, but men's souls will be primitive and brutish. Lord, the people now muster great armies who terrify and ravage and disintegrate men and things. But perhaps only those armies can restore men's true riches to them. They will destroy everything, and, and men, liberated from their earthly well-being, will turn again to God. And once they find him, they can construct a spiritual dominion which today they are bent on destroying. Dear Lord, if this is really what's happening, what can we do about it? The Christ smiled. The same thing the farmer does when the river floods his fields. Try to save the seed. When the river goes down, the 
the land comes out again, and the sun dries it. If the farmer has saved his seed, he can sow it in his field, which is even more fertile now that the lime-filled water of the river has soaked into it. And the seed will take root, and the fat golden spikes will give men bread, life, and hope. The point is to save the seed, which is faith. Have to help those who still have faith and keep it intact. Every day, men of many words and no faith are destroying the spiritual heritage and faith of other people. Men of every culture and religion. Oh, forgive me, sir. My head is full of wind. What can I do? You can sign the agreement about the refrigerator. Oh, don't tell me you've gone in for electrical appliances, too. No, I don't. Don Camillo went back to the re rectory all confused. He still couldn't believe he had heard the cries right then when he had said, poor girl. Anyway, he signed the contract, but it was quite a chore because perhaps it was the smoke from the fireplace, perhaps the diabolical sulfur fumes Flora had left behind, but his eyes were full of tears. Montagna soldato malattia. 
Ci vuole un bel 